Threshing is the process of separating the grain from the rest of a cereal plant, such as wheat, oats or barley. Until the early years of the 19th century, this was a labour-intensive job that took place in a threshing barn, like this one. A threshing barn has two large doors opposite each other, facing the prevailing wind. So, with both doors open, the wind blows through the barn. Between the doors was a hard floor, known as the threshing floor. When it was time to start threshing, two boards were put up at each door to keep the grain inside the barn. These boards were known as thresholds. The sheaves, or stooks, were brought in from the fields after harvesting and piled onto the threshing floor. Workers used long hinge sticks called flails to beat the plants. This broke the grain away from the stems. The long straw was taken away and stored for animal food and bedding. This left short broken straw, leaves and some weeds mixed in with the grain. The second part of the process is known as winnowing. Long wooden forks, known as winnowing forks, were used to toss the grain into the air. The wind blowing through the barn blew the lighter straw and leaves away while the heavier grain dropped back to the floor. After this, the grain was put through a sieve, and then bagged up. As farms grew bigger, and farming became more intensive to feed the growing urban population, it became important to find a way of mechanising the threshing process. The development of an effective threshing machine was not a single invention, but a process of small steps that took place in many countries around the world. It was not until the invention of portable steam engines that the threshing machine took the form of the example you can see at the museum. The threshing machine has many components that are connected together using drive belts. A steam engine was connected to the main drive pulley, and that started the whole machine moving and clanking. The stooks were forked up to the platform on top of the thresher, where a worker cut the binding and fed them into the hopper. Long straw came out of one end of the thresher, often attached to a baling machine, and the grain was collected in bags at the other end. Let's have a look under the covers. The crop drops into the space between a roller equipped with metal ridges, the threshing drum, and a slanted wooden container known as the concave. This crushed the stems and separated the grain. The grain and other light materials dropped through the concave. The straw was tossed out of the drum onto the straw walkers. The movement of the straw walkers drove the straw up the ramp and shook the any remaining grain out. The grain fell through holes in the straw walkers and back down a sloped collector. The straw fell off the ends of the straw walkers. The threshing machine doesn't just do the threshing. It is a winnowing machine as well. Uh, let's remove the threshing equipment. There is a large sieve fitted into a board that is shaken backwards and forwards. The grain falls through the sieve. There is a fan that blows any lighter material, known as calder, along the board, where it falls out just behind the long straw. The grain falls through a second sieve into a container at the bottom of the thresher. The next step is to lift the grain back up to the top of the machine. This is done using the grain elevator that scoops the grain up and then deposits it in the de -orner. Some cereal crops, such as barley, have long spikes on each grain. These spikes are known as awns and need to be removed. The de uses brushes inside a drum that rub the grain against a circular sieve. This breaks the awns from the grain. After de there is another fan that blows away the awns. 
the grain drops through a final sieve into the hopper. Grain sacks are attached to outlets at the bottom of the hopper. These can be opened and filled, ready for the miller.